Hello and welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to be talking about binary um, and it's very important to us and I'm going to talk about why is binary so important, why do we want to know about binary and how it's important for computers and for basically even computers to do what they need to do, uh, binary becomes a very important part of computers. So at this point we're going to be learning about binary but to get started I'm going to go back and I want to talk a little bit about Last year we talked about this guy right here. Now when I was a kid growing up, this is what I used to use to save my information onto the computer. However, today we don't really use these anymore, but if you remember, this is a floppy disk, and you might say, well, why is it a floppy disk? Well, if I pull it out of here, I did cut this open. It's a disk! And not only is it a disk, it is floppy, so it's a floppy disk. All right, so today we don't really use floppy disks. Um, instead, today what we end up using instead of floppy disks is a lot of times you'll use a flash drive or a thumb drive or known as a USB drive as well that we will use. And the purpose of these devices is basically to store information. So we used to store information on these disks years ago when I was a kid growing up. We'd store information on these disks as magnetic bits of information. Now, I said magnetic bits, and we'll talk about what a bit is in a little bit, but magnetic bits. And then the other thing is that we want to address with that is, well, it's not always magnetic bits. It might be something like optical bits, or it might be something like flash memory, which is basically electronic charges that you would have on a device. But I'm going to go back and talk a little bit about this floppy disk, and then we'll go from there. So going back and thinking about that floppy disk, that is a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. And that disk can hold information on it. So we can store information on there. Now the amount of information that can go on that disk is 360 KB. Well, what's KB stand for? And this is something we've kind of talked about the other year. KB actually stands for kilo, which means 1,000. And then we talked about the B, which stands for, yes, byte. And we're not talking about this kind of a byte. No, this is not the byte we're talking about right now. We're talking about BY. TE, okay? So it's a unit of storage is what a byte is. So getting a little bit more specific about that unit of storage, it's a unit of storage that's made up of actually eight bits. Which gets me to the question, okay, if it's made up of eight bits, what is a bit? And we're going to just briefly talk about what a bit would be. And I'm just gonna go over here and draw this little arrow coming over here to talk about a bit. Well, you might remember from the other year, I talked about a bit. A bit is either going to be this or this, okay? So a bit is either, what did I just do? Turn the lights on and then turn them back off. So a bit is just simply either on or off. Now, if it's on, we refer to that usually with a one. If it is off, we refer to that as with a zero. And I'm sure you've seen this icon before. It looks like this. And hopefully it makes sense to you now. If you think about why does that icon look like that? Well, if you look at it, it is a one and a zero that combination being on and off. So it's a power button for on and off. So there's something you can go home with and when you ask your mom or dad, you can say, Mom, Dad, hey, why does this icon look like this on my power button for my TV? And you can actually explain. It's actually two bits. It's a one, which is the one bit, and a zero, which is the other bit. Okay, so the one meaning on and the zero meaning off. So what does a byte look like? A byte then is going to look simply like this.
there is an example of a byte. We have all these ones and zeros put together, eight of them. So if you do a combination of eight ones and zeros, it's going to represent a byte. Now, what's, why is this so important? Well, let's think back all of a sudden. Computers are really smart, right? They know everything. Well, not really, because everything they know has been programmed into the computer. So it's really not the computer that's smart. It's the people who've actually programmed the computers to do the things that they do that makes them what do the things that they do or seem intelligent. So it's really the people behind it. So the computer we talked about before really only understands two things. It only understands ons and offs. Okay, and from all those ons and offs, it does everything that it does. It doesn't know the letter A, it doesn't know B, it doesn't know C, it doesn't know any of those characters or symbols that are on your keyboard. What we have to do is represent all those symbols and characters in a binary form. So this could be some letter, it could be some symbol on your keyboard, and if I go back to this floppy disk here, this floppy disk can hold 360 kilobytes of information, which means it can hold 360,000 letters or symbols of some sort on that disk. After that, the disk is full, you need another disk. All right. Fortunately, our storage devices that we have today are a lot bigger than that floppy disk, but that's where I wanted to kind of start with you guys today is reflecting back on this whole idea of kilobytes and bytes and what bytes are and bits so that we have a good understanding of that. All right, so you guys are going to be receiving a worksheet. If you haven't received the worksheet already, that'll be coming out to you guys. And the worksheet will have a place for your name, date, and section at the top. And you want to go ahead and print your, your name, date, and your section there. And then you'll see it talks about binary code. So the worksheet should look something like this. And we're going to go through the process of doing this worksheet together. Uh, starting out, I will get you going on the worksheet, and then I'm going to turn it over to you guys to kind of work together with your shoulder buddies and finger, figure out the rest of this. Because what you're going to be doing is learning how to count in binary today. All right, so looking at the worksheet, at the top, since computers only understand ons and offs, the ones and zeros, which I was just talking about, the development of binary code was essential for computers to exist. Well. Think about that. Which was first, binary code or computers? Well, binary code's been around for a very long time. In fact, the ancient Egyptians used to use binary as a form of counting. Uh, so it's something from a long time ago. And I'm not going to get into the whole discussion of what a computer is because there's some debates on that and everything else as far as like I could sit here and discuss about is an abacus a computer? Um, and that would lead into a whole different discussion of which was kind of first, was binary or were computers kind of first. But the idea is we need to have binary, this whole idea of binary code for computers to actually do anything. But the other part here, continuing to read here, it says similar to base 10, the binary numbering system has an infinite amount of numbers that can be represented. It's an infinite, infinite. That's going on forever. Therefore, the system can be used to represent and do an infinite amount of things. And then you'll see there are some definitions going on where it tells you about binary, which we already kind of talked about. Binary is a way of representing information with only two options. So looking at the vocab here, which I have on the uh, computer screen as well. And we're going to kind of go through this worksheet. I'm going to move over to the computer right now and away from the board. And looking at the whole thing with binary, again, is a way of representing information with two options. Now, those options might be magnetic bits. They could also be optical bits if it was a CD. Uh, they could be electronic bits if it's a flash drive or thumb drive. And then, Continu continuing here, uh, the other term that you'll have there on your sheet is, again, a byte, which I had on the board there. And it's simply a unit of data made up of eight bits, okay, those ons and offs, that can be used to represent a character such as a letter, number, or typographical symbol. 
And then we had the whole concept of a bit, which a bit is actually the smallest unit of memory. And a bit can only have two values, either on or off, one or zero. And then I put on here on my slideshow, basically the whole concept here of different values, a kilobyte, which would be 1,000 bytes, megabyte, 1 million bytes, a gigabyte, which would be 1 billion bytes, a terabyte would be 1 trillion bytes, and then you got petabytes, which is a petatrillion, and then you get an exabyte, and then you got your zettabyte, some really large numbers, and it even goes on to things talking about yottabytes. Now, when I started thinking about this, it got me really kind of curious. I'm like thinking to myself, wait a minute, all these bytes and all this thing about storage, I kind of asked myself a question. I was like, hmm, I wonder how much information can the average brain hold? And you can always Google that and you can do a search on it. But typically what I find is answers any place between kind of like this thing about 10 terabytes to 2.5 petabytes. Well, that puts us in this area right here. And one of the things I started realizing when I started thinking about that is like, hmm, guess what? You can never know it all. So we're kind of in that whole world of, yes, we're lifelong learners. And even after you learn certain things, our brain is kind of a unique device that actually does some pretty cool things because we have like short-term memory and long-term memory and we can actually decide what to keep in our memory and what to let go. So we don't hold on to all the information in our lives. We actually learn things and then there's times that we forget those things and that's a normal process for the brain to go through. But we're constantly learning and we constantly want to keep that whole mindset of having lifelong learning happening in our lives. So now we're going to move on to the actual paper at this point down below there and the direction says using the string of eight boxes, the byte which is represented by these eight boxes going across here and the understanding that each of those boxes is going to be a bit which can either be turned on which I can turn that box on there or I can turn that box off. So I can turn the boxes on or off um, clicking there on my screen. So, and then if the box is on, in this particular case for the first one, if you think about that, if that box is going to be on, well, it's going to have a value of one. And if I would be wanting to turn that box off, it would have a value of zero. So now before I go into this whole thing, what we're going to be doing is following along here and we're going to write the binary representation. So only ones and zeros are going to be used here on the left side where it says binary or base two. And on the right side is our base 10, which we're used to already because this is how we were taught to count. And there are 10 numbers that we use in base 10 and then we start repeating those numbers. Uh, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and those are the 10 numbers we then use again over and over again in our base 10. Well, in base 2, we're only using two numbers, and those two numbers that we're going to use are 1 and 0 to represent information. So if we have to represent 0 in base 2 and compare it to base 10, well, pretty simple. I'm just going to turn this box off here in the first place. And if I turn that box off, it's going to be worth zero. So zero is going to be equal to zero. So zero in binary is equal to zero in base 10. All right, so if I want to represent one, so you can, again, on your worksheet, you should have a one above that first box. And now we said that zero is equal to zero. Now we're going to go to the second one here. And we had, okay, we have to represent one in binary. Well, can I represent one in binary? Sure, we can use this first box right here. And if I turn that box on, that's gonna be worth one. So one is equal to one. Well, now comes the problem. I wanna represent two, but this box, I can only represent two values. I can only represent on being a one and off being a zero. So if I want to represent two, I'm going to need another box. I'm going to need another placeholder in a sense. Um, it's just kind of like what happens to you when you count zero through nine. You get to nine, 
uh, you have to represent the next value, well, you need another place value, which would be your tens place value. So in this case, we need another place value in a sense. Uh, so at this point, we have zero and one represented. I can't represent two with this box, so what I need is another box. And that box right here, if I turn it on, we're going to make that box worth the next value that you're trying to get to. So what comes after one would be two. So we're going to make this box here worth two. So we'll put a two above that box. So if that box is turned on, that box is worth two. If we turn that box off, it's worth nothing. So it's either worth two or it's worth nothing in this place value. So here, if I want to represent two, I'm going to need this box turned on in that location. So I'm going to put a one in that location. My other box here, I want that one off. So here is two in binary. So I'm going to have my first box on. If that's one, it's worth two. And remember, if this box is off, it's worth zero. So two and zero is going to give me two. So again, this one is indicating that value right there is going to be two. All right, so let's go to the next one and think about this for a second. I want to represent three. I have these two boxes. Can I represent three using those two boxes? Well, if you think about it, if I turn the two on and I would turn the one on and then I have two and one, well, two and one well, that would give me three. Yeah, so if I turn both these boxes on and I add those values together, two plus one, that's going to give me three. So turn both those boxes on, that's equal to three. All right, so what about four? If we think about four, can I represent four with those two boxes? Well, if I think about that, I can't. Because the maximum value I'm going to be able to represent with those two boxes would be turning them both on. If I turn them both on, I have the two and the one, that gives me three. It's not enough. So I'm going to need, yes, you guessed it, another box. But what's that box going to be worth? It's the next value we're trying to get to. So what's the next value we're trying to get to? I can already represent one. I can already represent two. I can already represent three. Oh, the next value I'm trying to get to? It's going to be four. So when I add another box here, it's the next value that we're trying to get to. So if I turn this box on, that box is going to be worth four. So now if I need to represent four, I'm going to use that third box there, and I'm going to turn that one on, and then I'm going to turn this one off, and I'm going to turn the next one off. So four, I only want that box on. I don't want these boxes on. So four in binary is going to be one, zero, zero. So now that we got four, how about five? Can we represent five with these three boxes? I want you to think about that. And what I want you to do, honestly, at this point in time is Talk to your shoulder buddy, talk to the person next to you, see if you can figure out five in binary. After you figure out five in binary, see if you can figure out six in binary. And then after you figure out six, how about seven? Do seven in binary. And then figure out eight, then nine, and then yes, I want you to figure out 65. But hopefully by the time you're getting down to nine, you're starting to realize what's happening and how this is working. And then when you have to do 65, I'll give you a hint, you're gonna to have to use at least these seven boxes right here to get to 65. All right, so go ahead, work with your shoulder buddy right now, and then you know, pause the video, stop the video at this point, and I want you to work with your shoulder buddy through this process of trying to figure out the binary for five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 65. When you're done doing that, start the video again, and I'll go over the answers with you at that point in time. So at this point, go ahead and pause your video.
and complete the rest of those numbers there on your worksheet. Okay, so now that you had the opportunity to work with your shoulder buddy on that uh, worksheet, hopefully you figured this out. I'm going to kind of go through the answers at this point and hopefully they're making sense to you and we can kind of work our way through all these different things there. So the first one here uh, that we're going to start with is 5 after 4. So if I need to represent 5, what I need to do is think about, okay, I have 4 and I need what other value to get to 5? Well, 4 and 2, no, 4 and 1. Yeah, 4 and 1. I need to have my 4 on, so I'm going to have the 4 on. The 2 should be off. And then my 1, I need to turn that one on because 4 and 1 is going to give me 5. So 1, 0, 1 is going to be equal to 5 in binary. All right, going to 6. If I want to represent 6 using these boxes, can I do it? Well, if I think this through, if I turn my 4 on, that's worth 1. I mean, that's going to be worth 4. If I turn that on, so I put a 1 there, so I have 4. How much more do I need? 4 plus, well, oh, 4 plus 2. And I turn the 2 on, I have 2. So 4 plus 2, that gives me 6. So I want the 1 to be turned off. So all I want is the 4, the 2, and the 1 is going to be off. So this is going to give me 6. 4 plus 2 plus 0 is going to be 6. Moving on to 7. Can I represent 7 using these three boxes? And the answer to that is, yeah, sure I can. Because if I turn all three of these on, I have 4 plus 2, that's 6, plus one more, that would be 7. So I want to turn all of them on. So the 4 is going to be on, the 2 is going to be on, and the 1 is going to be on. So now when they're all on, I have 4 plus 2 plus 1, that's going to give me 7. How about 8? Oh, wait a minute. If we start thinking about this, I turn them all on. That's their maximum value. When this is on, that's its maximum value. It's either 4 or it's nothing. So 4 or 0. This is going to be 2 or 0. This is going to be 1 or 0. So they each have two values. Now. If I think about all these being on, that's 7. That's the maximum value I can get to is when they're all turned on. So the next value I want to get to is 8. So again, like I said before, the next box is going to be that next value you are trying to get to. So the next highest, the next value that comes after 7 would be 8, and I can't represent 8 with those three boxes. So this box here is going to be worth 8 when I turn it on. So now, to do binary in 8, it's simply going to be the 8 has to be on, the 4 is off, the 2 is off, and the 1 is off. So 1, 0, 0, 0 in binary is equal to 8. So how about 9? Well, for 9, I need my 8. Okay, And what else would I need? Well, I would also need 8 plus well, 1. So the 8's going to be on, the 4's going to be off, the 2's going to be off, and the 1's going to be on. So again, 8 plus 1 is going to give me 9. So again, my 8's on, my 1's on, that's going to be equivalent to 9. So before I go to 65, we can sit here and continue going through this. What if I turned on the 8 and the 4 and left the 2 and the 1 off. What would that be in binary? Well, 8 and 4, if I turn the 8 and 4 on, that would give me 8 plus 4, that's 12. So if I needed to represent 12 in binary, it would simply be 1, 1, 0, 0. And I can go through the whole thing. What would the binary of 15 be? I'll let you think of that one through for a second. The binary for 15. Well, if you turn them all on, you have 8 plus 4, that's 12, plus 2 more, that gives me 14, plus 1 more, well, that gives me 15. Okay, so if we start thinking, okay, if I turn all four of those on, I have 8 plus 2 plus, yeah, 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, that's going to give me 15. What's the next value that comes after 15? 
And if you think that through, you would go, oh, that's right. So my next value, if I turn all these on, my next value would be 16. Now, if we start looking at this, you'll see there's a pattern. We go from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16. What's happening to these numbers? Well, if you look at that, these numbers are doubling. They're multiplying by 2. So this box here is going to be worth the next value, but I can prove this. In my head, I'm going to say, okay, it's going to be 32 because 2 times 16 is 32. But let's think about this. If I turned all these on, 1, 2, 4, and 8, that gives me 15. 15 plus 16 is going to give me 31. What's the next value after 31? So I can represent everything from 0 to 31 with those five boxes. But when I need to represent 32, I need another box. So that's where this box comes in, and that one's going to be worth 32. And again, it continues that same pattern going out. So this is going to be 64, which is pretty exciting to me because it reminds me of my childhood growing up because that's my first computer. I had a Commodore 64, and really what that meant was it held 64 Kilo, or it had 64 kilobytes of RAM. Not a whole lot of storage, but it had 64 kilobytes of storage. And then, well, my roommate in college, when I got to college, he actually had the next Commodore computer that came out, which was the Commodore, you guessed it, 128, which would be the next value here. All right, so at this point, we can represent 65. Now, I'm going to go through the process here of representing 65 starting with the 128. Do we need a 128? Well, no, that's way too large. I don't need a 128 in this case, so that's going to stay off. Well, how about a 64? Well, sure, I can take 64 and subtract it from my 65, and that's going to give me something there. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, I need my 64. And then it's like, do I need a 32? No, I don't need a 32. Do I need a 16? Nope. Do I need an 8? No, that would be too much. How about a 4? No, too much. How about a 2? No, too much. Oh yeah, 1. Because 64 and 1 is going to give me 65. There it is. So we have our answer for 65, which right there you can see you have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, that should look familiar because if you look back up at the board, and we go back to the board. Hey, there was the answer. It was there the whole time. So what's the big deal? All right, this is 65. So you have a box there, and this is saying equals, and it has that box, and you have the 65 there in a box. What I want you to do next to that 65 is I want you to put the capital letter A. This is the letter A in binary. It's a capital letter in A to be more specific. But why? Why 65? Why did they pick that number to represent a capital letter A? Good question. You might ask yourself that. I'll throw it to you this way. What letter is the A in the alphabet? Well, if you think about it, it's the first letter in the alphabet, right? So it's the first letter. It's number one, all right? Let's break this down into nibbles. Yeah, nibbles, something else to know. If I sit here and take the first four and then look at the second four, they call these nibbles. So that's a nibble. All right, so when you look at half of a bite, it's a nibble. Getting hungry? I think I am. But anyway, moving on here. So if we look at the second nibble here, Zero, 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 0001 well that's one so if I don't look at this nibble I look at this one that's one and that would be a okay and guess what B is hmm, I really shouldn't tell you this but B is pretty simple it's a second letter right so the first nibble would stay the same and this would have to go to two well if we think about two zero zero one zero and this would actually, if I did the same with the first part, this would be 66, and that would be the letter B. 
and it would continue. All right, so the second letter of the alphabet is B. Third letter of the alphabet, C. Fourth letter of the alphabet, D. So it kind of continues in that same fashion. So what I want you to do, you have that box down there at the bottom, which is empty at this point. So what I want you to do is figure out your first initial or last initial in binary. Now, if your first initial is 65, hmm, pick another letter, take your last initial. So hopefully your first initial and last initial are not A or B, because we have those answers already. Um, if it is, you can try doing like your middle initial or something else there. But we did A, and I kind of showed you B. What I want you to do in that last box is figure out what the binary code is for your first or last initial. So to the right of that box, you want to write your initial. So I'm going to do W for my last name. And then what I would do is I need to know what that value is in decimal form. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. And you can see on this slide that I can find W. And my W on that slide is 87. So I would put an 87 in that box on my worksheet. And then after I put an 87 in that box on my worksheet, I want to go through the process of figuring out my initial in binary. Okay? So go ahead and figure out your initial in binary, and then uh, you can pause the video right now. I'll go through the process of doing W on the board here, and you can understand how I figured out what W is in binary, and hopefully it'll help you out as well there. So go ahead and pause the video right now, figure out your initial in binary, and then you can play it and you can see how I figured out my initial in binary uh, here for W. Okay, taking a look at W. Uh, when we look at W for figuring out that in binary, I'm going to start out again. My first location here would be my 128. Do I need a 128? Well, no, 128 is larger than 87. So I'm going to start with writing down 87. I don't need a 128 because it's too big. So I'm going to put a zero here. That's my 128. I don't need it. How about my next spot, a 64? Can I take 64 away from 87? The answer to that is yes. I can subtract 64 from my 87. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 64. That's where that one's coming from. So this is my 128, which I don't want that. My 64, I do want. So what I'm going to do is subtract 64 from my 87. And when I do that, I come up with 23. And then I'm going to continue. All right, that was 64. Here's my 32. Do I need a 32? Well, no, 32 is too big. So I can't subtract 32 from that number. So I'm going to put a zero. Then I'll go to my next number. Well, this would be my 16. Can I take 16 away from there? Sure. So what I'm going to do is take a 16, and I'll subtract my 16. And when I subtract 16 from my 23, well, I'm going to borrow 1 from the 2, put a 1 there. That's going to give me 7 when I subtract. All right, continuing, I need to get to 7 now. All right, so I have my 16. The next thing there is an 8. Well, no, an 8's too big, so that's going to be off. And then I have, oh, right, 4, 2, and 1. As I remembered before, if I turn the 4 on, that's 4. Two, 4 plus 2, that gives me 6, plus one more would give me 7. So I'm going to need the 4, so I can subtract that. All right, so I'll take the 4. I also then, I'll have a remainder here, three, and I need to get the three. Well, I need a two, so I'll have a two, and that's gonna leave me with a one, and I need a one as well to finally get that to come out to zero. So there you go. This is the binary for W, all right? So I have off, on, off, on, off, on, on, on. 
So there's the binary code for W, which is 87. Now, what's going to happen next time you guys are in class is we're going to go through the process of actually taking this a step further. When I get back, we are going to make, yes, a binary bracelet. This right here, which I'm wearing, you can see that I have this binary bracelet which has orange and yellow beads. My orange beads are representing my offs. My yellow beads are representing my ons. So on this bracelet, if I look across that bracelet, I have off, on, off, on, off, on, on, on. That is the letter W. So we'll be making bracelets that you guys can then wear, take home and say, hey, mom, dad, look what I did in computer class. And they're gonna be like, you made a bracelet? Really? Yeah, mom, it's more than just a bracelet. Yeah, it's a string of beads. No, mom, it's more than that. It's the letter W, it's in binary. And you can go and explain to your mom and dad how binary works and is used to represent different letters, okay? Awesome, so hopefully we've completed our task there. You know what binary is. If you haven't added that to your crossword puzzle that you have for class, you wanna make sure you add that to your crossword puzzle as well. We talked about bytes, we talked about bits, and we even introduced another idea of nibble. Oh, by the way, I didn't really talk about your other ones, but you know, we were talking about lower or uppercase letters here. Lowercase letters, kind of same thing. Guess what? A is the first letter in the alphabet. Okay, so this first nibble actually has to do a little bit with the shift key. It's, I'm not going to get in all the detail on that, but I'll, I'll just put this up here on my computer so you can kind of see there uh, the different binary code for the different characters that you find on your keyboard. So you can see all those different things there. All right, so that takes care of this lesson here at this point. With any time that remains, you guys want to continue working on your coding lessons that you need to complete. And I will see you next time. Take care.